Okay, John Hagee is one of those guys that I used to listen to when I first became born of the Spirit of God. Back in 2001, 2002, it was John Hagee, it was Hal Lindsey, it was Jack and Rexella Van Impey, and uh, yeah, I guess a little bit of Pat Robertson too. But John Hagee was one of these guys that I really loved. Powerful, powerful man, uh, powerful speaker, and he seemed to have a lot of knowledge of the Bible. All of them did, but uh, you know, obviously, with time and with study, I was able to to uh, see that there's something wrong. <laughs> to put it mildly, something wrong with what these guys are teaching okay well, what is this here let me turn that off okay so I want to share a clip this is just sort of random alright so this is what, 10 months ago and just a sort of random place I guess um, I noticed here in this um, this um, video it talks about the end times are here purpose of Jerusalem and then the return of Christ and then the trumpets are sounding and uh, what do we got here there's hope in the rapture I'm only gonna play a little bit here and just sort of dissect a little bit now also I noticed here donate now right fundraiser when I mean, these guys want your money but do they want the truth and so let's examine very carefully what John Hagee has to say and what you fail to do the, the gap that exists between what you could have been and not were not because you did not use the opportunities God blessed you you are still going to be in heaven but you are going to receive a reward in heaven based on what you did on this earth where there are going to be five different crowns that you can receive alright so first of all this is number one BS. All right, you, there's one reward, and that reward is everlasting life. That's it. You might, uh, you'll, yeah, I'm sorry, you will receive rewards right now in this life, in this world, for your faith. But in the life to come, there is only one reward, there is only one punishment. All right, and the judgment is very simple. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Right? Either you have sin or you have no sin. The only way to have no sin is if Jesus covers your sin. Everybody else has one sin, and because they have one sin, they die the second death. It's that simple. This idea that, well, hey, I got lots of money, so I'm going to get lots of rewards. That's not in the Bible anywhere. Nowhere at all. It's not so, so, I mean, I've heard people say this, and it drives me nuts. They say that you get extra rewards for doing extra good stuff here on earth. No, you don't. There's only one reward you're going to get. That reward is greater than anything that you can imagine. Why would you need five rewards? You think because you got five mansions and five, you know, Bentleys or whatever, that you're going to get five rewards in heaven? No, you're not. You'd be lucky to get one reward, but that's all you need is one reward, and that's everlasting life. Now let's continue. You'll receive a white robe. And we are going to receive the mansions. We are going. You already got the mansions, John. Going to be there for a period of seven years. Wait, what? Wait, wait, hold on a second. Forgive me. What? What's he talking about? Still going to be in heaven, but you are going to receive a reward in heaven based on what you did on this earth, where there are going to be five different crowns that you can receive. You receive a white robe and we are going to receive the mansions we are going to be there for a period of seven years alright so he just I guess you get 
one white rope and four mansions, I guess. I don't know what he's talking about. ...that you can receive. You'll receive a white robe, and we are going to receive the mansions. We are going to be there for a period of seven years. All right, first of all, okay, second of all, third of all, whatever. There is not a seven-year period of anything at all in the Bible. It's not there. Man, I could, I could show... <laughs> you nothing and say see nothing I can't show you seven years that he's talking about because it's not in the Bible anywhere nowhere and it isn't it rather odd that Jesus didn't know about this seven years because he never talks about it and there will be the marriage supper of the lamb while we're in Right, okay, so let me explain this so that there's no confusion. It's very simple. The marriage is between Jesus Christ and his people. His people are the bride of Christ. All right, and that happens when he comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. That's the marriage. All right, and then of course our enemy is gathered at our feet, and they are destroyed forever. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And if this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thou head. And it, shall, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Talk, that's when God talks to the serpent. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now the woman came from man, but from the woman comes Christ. Right? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And her seed is Christ. And it shall bruise thou head. It's going to bruise the serpent's head. And... Thou shalt bruise his heel. That's Jesus Christ stomping his heel, his foot, upon the head of the serpent and destroying all evilness forever. All right. This is on the marriage day, the great day of the Lord. This is when we are raptured up, our enemies gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right. That's the marriage. And wickedness is done away with forever there's no more pain no more sorrow no more suffering no more death all these things are done away with in heaven seven years there's there not will... seven years nothing nothing at all appear on this earth the antichrist and he's the antichrist going... is already here he's been here for a long time you read revelation 17 it's very clear there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and one is yet to come. Speaking of a succession of kings, all you have to do is connect the dots, okay? Connect the dots. That's all you have to do. The Antichrist has been here. Whether you call him the beast or the man of sin, the Antichrist, the false Christ, Jesus even himself puts an S on the end of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Matthew 24, for example, for that there shall arise false Christ. Not one person. This is not a Hollywood where you got some little baby born with a tattoo on his head and he's gonna rise up and have great power. That's not that's not in the Bible. That's only in Hollywood. Alright, right here, this false Christ, that's Antichrist. Same thing. You see the word Antichrist, what it mentioned uh couple of times but this is all in reference to Daniel who John Hagee likes to refer to likes to talk about what is said in the book of Daniel we'll get into that all right even now are there many antichrists you've heard the antichrist shall come he's talking about what Daniel is speaking of when Daniel speaks of the four beasts, he mentions the first three beasts by name the fourth beast is the antichrist it is a this it is defined as a king and his kingdom. Now we can deduce by reading Luke chapter 2 verse 1 that this fourth beast 
this fourth kingdom is the Roman Empire all right and we'll go back and you see here uh, all in first John and second John you're not finding that word anywhere else are you isn't that interesting you think John was the only one that knew about it well, let's go back to Revelation which was written by the same John he, you think he forgot all about the Antichrist when it came to the book of Revelation? I think nobody else but John knew about it? Not even Jesus? Is that what you think? Right here, the beast that thou sawest, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. This is in reference to the fourth beast of Daniel. And Daniel um, very plainly says there are four beasts and then the end of the world. All right, the fourth beast is clearly the beast of Revelation, the beast that was and is not, and yet is, is the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. Clear as day. Going to set up a government of ten, ten men who will lead groups of nations that will be complete dictators on the face of the earth. Every commercial exchange will be recorded. You cannot do anything without his permission. He will start out making a treaty with the state of Israel that's for seven years. That's not in the Bible anywhere. He will break that treaty in three and a half years. Okay, so now he's talking about Jesus. Okay, and this is where I got a problem with. <clears throat> These guys, they're all they, that all teach this they're all claiming Jesus is the Antichrist you can't wiggle around this you can deceive and uh, you know not even you can not even point to the scripture you're referring to but anybody that's read the Bible they, they know what he's talking about and he's talking about the Messiah of Daniel 9 all right, and uh, let's see here, right there. And he shall confirm the covenant, what John Hagee calls the treaty. All right, so let's go, let's do it this way. There, there are ways to uh, reveal their secrets, in my opinion, uh, when they expose themselves, when they drop their drawers. And what was that, 27? They drop their drawers and you can see their dirty underwear. All right. So, oops, come on now. Right, there you go. The EXB, the X Bible, I guess, the TLB, the Tender Loving Bible, I don't know, I have no idea. The NLT, and the voice I, I don't know which one he's referring to but that's the word that he's getting that from and uh, the covenant the promise that Jesus makes with us is that he will return to gather us together to be with him he is the one that died that laid down his life so that our sins will be no more all right, for the remission of sins, for the cancellation, the removal of all sin. And uh, real quickly, let me just do this here. Because I, I think this is important. It's powerful. It's amazing. It's heartwarming. It's comforting. It's great. All right, let me see if I can find. I can't remember exactly what verse. I think it's there for by the for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified now think about that from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool you remember I just talked about that right <laughs> his footstool that's when we are lifted up in the air in a moment, in the 
twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. We will go. We will take off this mortality and put on immortality. We will take off incorruption, and I'm sorry. We will take off corruption and put on incorruption. This is why I should read the Bible and not try to quote it because I always screw it up. But it's there. It's in the Bible. We're going to be changed forever. First, the dead in Christ will rise and then those of us which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord right and that's when we are up in the air and we are changed by his offering by his laying down his life for us we are perfected forever we are sanctified and perfected for ever all right and then this everything's going to be new at this point when all wickedness is destroyed the all wickedness is gathered at our feet and destroyed forever all right now this is what jesus christ promised us this is not the antichrist Alright, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. Now, here, let's focus on this, Messiah. Who's the Messiah? The Antichrist? Or is it Jesus Christ? Of course, it's Jesus Christ. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah... Is this Jesus Christ? Is he the, your Messiah? Or is the Antichrist your Messiah? Alright, and again, and the, all, you know, all this right here is, is in context of Jesus Christ. There's no mention whatsoever of any, of any Antichrist at all. And he shall confirm, he, being Jesus Christ, confirms his promise and then he lays down his life for us, right? So he causes the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. The Antichrist ain't going to do that. Jesus Christ offered himself as the sacrifice. By the offering, by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. The Antichrist ain't going to do that. In the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The consummation being the marriage, the when we are resurrected and lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God and devours them all how can somebody so well in this seven year period there will be six seals six uh, seven seals seven trumpets and seven vials 21 super good grief man unable to connect the dots there's going to be one <clears throat> excuse me one end of the world there's going to be one wrath of god poured out upon the whole earth revelation 20 speaks of it as being fire coming down from god out of heaven now in these the seven vials that's that's given a, a greater description of the wrath of god which is the same thing okay i'm making a big deal out of nothing here but 21 there will be six seals Six, uh, seven seals, seven. See, he's confusing. It's almost as if he's never read the book of Revelation. This is what's driving me crazy. He is feeding off of people that do not read their Bible. Well, what am I looking for here? Let's do it this way. The seals are not the same as the vials of wrath poured, about, uh, poured upon the earth okay and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar 
the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season and tell, thy, and tell their fellow servants also, and the brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You remember reading that in Matthew 24, in verse 29, when it says, The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It's the same thing, fellas. It's the same thing. It's the sign of Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. This is at the sixth seal. The, the first one, two, three, four, and five are not the wrath of God. This is all leading up to the end of the world. The sixth seal is the end of the world. Of course, if, if you don't read the Bible, you how would you know? How would you know? If you don't have any faith in what you're reading, how would you know? How could you have any understanding at all if you don't believe what you read? You have to have faith. What this man is teaching and what is the same thing he's always taught. He was teaching this 22 years ago. All right, and and that's why I got a little bit of a um, you know I'm a little bit fired up about it because of all these guys that have misled me and confused me and lied to me all this time it it burns me it burns me these guys just stroll around in their comforter uh, comfortable seats you know with their nice suits and their little hanky in the pocket misleading and lying to people deceiving people and they just like they deceived me he's still up on his throne deceiving people I have a problem with that Calling Jesus, you don't think that that doesn't bother you that somebody like this with this much popularity is calling Jesus Christ the Antichrist? He's saying that the Messiah is the Antichrist. That doesn't bother you? <laughs> There's something wrong with a man's heart when they read Daniel 9 and they call the Messiah the Antichrist. Something seriously wrong with that. seven trumpets and seven vials, 21 supernatural acts of judgment that are coming on this earth. Just one of those acts will be whenever angels are released to destroy a third of the earth's population in a day. What's going to happen on this earth will be hell on earth. Wow. And we, wow. the bride of Christ, are wow. going... Wow, I didn't know that. John, tell me more. ...to be in heaven people teaching that we are going to go through that just simply or biblically yeah, no we're not going through the wrath of God all right but that's not what you're talking about so there is the wrath of God and there is the tribulation the great tribulation of Matthew 24 is not the wrath of God misinformed we are members of the bride of Christ Jesus is the blessed hope and there's nothing hope. All right, remember what he said there. We are the bride of Christ. Remember that. Just don't forget it. About living through seven years of hell to prove that you love Jesus. The Lord is going to take us to heaven. We're going to miss this chaos. And that's going to happen on the earth. And then Jesus Christ is going to return at the end of seven years. It's <laughs> still not in the Bible, no matter how many times you repeat it. It's not in the Bible. It's never been in the Bible. Seven years will be seven times 360 because that's a prophetic year. If what? you can tell me the day the Antichrist will sign that treaty, I can... And he will confirm the covenant. It doesn't say sign, but he will confirm the covenant. And that's Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Come on, guys. It's not complicated. That's what he's referring to. I don't believe he'll mention it, but that's what he's referring to. He's clearly talking about Jesus Christ laying down his life for us. I can tell you to 
the day that Jesus Christ will come back. We are going to come back, all of the Old Testament saints, the New Testament saints, all the angels of God, and we are going to, there will be a destruction at the battle of Armageddon of those who have come against the city of Jerusalem. Then there will be a 75 day gap. Now I know every preacher listening to this is sliding to the edge of his couch saying, where in the name of God is he getting this? That's a great question, John. Where in the name of God are you getting this? Five day gap. Now I know every preacher listening to this is sliding to the edge of his couch saying, Where in the name of God is he getting this? Where in the name of God is he getting this? Where in the name of God is he getting this? Now keep in mind, We'll do just one, just one verse would be enough here. Isaiah 45, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. Go to, uh, what's this say, that it might be filled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will not, I will, blah, 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 blah. I will utter things which have been kept secret. Now, you can also go, for nothing is hid. For nothing is secret. And Jesus says, uh, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Now just keep that in mind. Yes. This is in the book of Daniel. No, it's not. And it takes me several pages. Yeah, he's going to tell you. You, you calculate this number here with that verse there, and then you get over right on that and this and that. You go to Daniel 13, which don't even exist, and then you come up with 75. Now, I could understand if he was going to talk about, like, say, for example, there shall be 1,290 days, and blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Or what I say, thirteen hundred and five and thirty days. Thir same thing. Thirteen, thirteen thirty-five minus twelve hundred and ninety gives you forty-five. John, your math is off by thirty, but you're going to come up with something, aren't you, to justify this? Seventy-five days. It doesn't have any relevance to anything at all. Let's listen. Just to mathematically and scriptorially validate it. But I assure you, it's as true as John 3.16. There'll be a 75-day uh, uh, gap wherever, when Jesus comes back, there will be the judgment of the nations. That's Matthew 25. There's some call it the sheep and goat judgment. But the essence of that judgment is, how did you treat the Jewish people? How oh. did you treat the nation? Right there we go, fellas. Are you a Christian or are you a Jew? Because if you're a Jew, you're not a Christian. Of Israel. Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't bring water. And that has what to do with 75 days? Water to me. When I was in prison, you didn't come see me. He's describing many things that happened in the Holocaust. And they said... Those things are happening right now, John. When did we see you that? And he said, Inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. My brethren were the Jewish people. Certainly we're not Gentile. Alright, so you want to say Gentiles are not your brother. Okay. Alright. Let's see here. I think John A., wasn't it? Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's have another conversation here. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then you then are ye my disciples indeed. Huh? Yeah, if you continue in my word, ye are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Alright, now keep that in mind. 
They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is a servant, is the servant to sin, or of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our, our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication, we have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? And of course he goes on to say, Ye are of your father the devil. Speaking of the Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, John Hagee is claiming that those Jews over 1948 Israel that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are God's holy people. Okay, i got a problem with that. And I've got to go. i got to wrap this up. So I think I'm going to stop it right there. But I want you to examine all these teachers. All right, even the most popular ones and try the Spirit to see if they're from God first John this is not John Hagee okay first John chapter 4 verse 1 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world all right and look it it ought to burn you a little bit that these guys are outright lying to you. They're not just outright lying to you. They're outright lying to your friends, your family, your children. And nobody can stop them.